Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large cargo ship, and this one is called the C627 Armed Cargo Transport, which is well, this lovely thing over here. So this is a hydrogen powered ship that features a fair amount of guns around the outside. We've got four custom Gatling gun turrets and two assault cannon turrets to blast your enemies with, and it lands and takes off vertically, unlike most ships you see on the workshop page. So yes, you come all the way down, basically like so. The magnetic plates are right around that large hydrogen thruster down below there. And of course, the way to get all the way up and inside is right onto this section. So to be able to get up to this from the ground, you're going to have to either use your jetpack or get creative and use an elevator system, a ramp system, or even create a mod to create jump pads to be able to jump up to that doorway to get inside. But yes, pushing the camera all the way through, the entire interior has been set up correctly. So when we come in, we just walk all the way up. Apart from the cockpit, the cockpit is built into the ceiling and does face the way you'd expect when flying around through space. We'll see that a bit later on. Let me reload the camera. There we go. Press the F10, find it in spawn menu. There it is. This thing is 530 large blocks using a bunch of the DLC packs. We see up to here that it's vanilla, survival ready, it uses no mods, but it does have a couple scripts which are listed down below on the workshop page, which is the automatic LCT scene script and the enemy and radar script to see if anyone trying to sneak up on you. Anyway, down to here we've got some very important bits of information where it does have some special features in the form of a backup power system for both your main power and your hydrogen. So basically when your hydrogen tanks get below a certain percentage, in this case it's 4%, your hydrogen engines are going to activate and will keep you running for a nice long time. And then we've got a very similar system for our batteries where if your power gets below a certain percentage, your auxiliary batteries will activate and they'll just give you a nice bit of power. Anyway, down to there is your specifications, and there's the scripts it uses. So giving this thing a thumbs up, which I already have, because Nvidia Shadowplay failed to record this thing, I don't know what's going on with that lately. Yes, here we go, one more time for the outside. So at the very front of this thing, this is what we get, and that's a lone camera sitting on a column, surrounded by some dark grey steel blocks. Moving around onto the side, we can see our hydrogen thrusters for our up, down, left and right. So we get over to this section right here, we've got a small patch of white steel blocks that come across some orange steel blocks, where in between them we've got two large cargo containers for you to store all the stuff you need to transport from your base to a trade station, or just to your other base, say transporting building materials, and whatnot, and all of that. Anyway, there's one of two of your assault cannon turrets. Over to this section, your green light on the opposite side will be a red light. They've got some more hydrogen thrusters to boost it around, with two white blinking lights just to light up the darkness. Moving around onto this section, this is one of four custom turrets, the one on the two sides do push out quite a lot, compared to the top and the bottom which are more closer to the main body, but this is what we get, on top of a rotor we've got a hinge that comes across to a very small, small hinge, we've got ourselves two Gatling guns and a camera in the middle, with a bit of hazard skin, just to break it all up, make it look all nice and fancy. Move around towards the back of this thing, here we go, and there we are, so we've got merge block at the back, connect it up to other stuff, that's what we want to do. Anyway, back over to the side here, all the way across, there we go, we've got a nice bit of pipe block right there, some more hydrogen thrusters on the top and the bottom, we see then our other custom parts right there and there, but we'll get a better look at them when we actually go around the top of this thing. Then towards the back here, here we go, we've got one large hydrogen thruster, four magnetic plates for you to clamp this thing down on, and then we've got some interior light on our white magnetic plates, just to light up the area as we were to come down to the ground. That is something to mention right now, that there is no camera to help dock this thing up, so you will either have to have someone down onto the ground to guide you down, or you need to attach a camera on yourself, or of course you can just use a third person camera if that's what you want to do. Anyway, moving all the way up, all the way across, small neon tubes come all the way across those armoured panels, made the rear section look all nice and fancy. Over here we can see a couple more hydrogen thrusters, there's your connector and door to get inside, and here's one of our top galling guns, which is, well like I said, built into the main body, so our rotor's now down underneath there, but it's still the same turret as we saw on the side. Anyway, turn your attention back over to this section, and all the way across, I believe I just heard the meteor storm inbound. But yes, there's a red blinking light on top of a column, there's our small antenna, there's a warfare battery, then all the way across there, we can just want to make out our large cargo container. If we come over to this section where I'm standing, there's another hydrogen thruster at the very front. Moving all the way down underneath this thing, or at least what I'm calling the bottom of this ship, there's another hydrogen thruster, there's our orange strip once again. There goes all of our guns shooting the meteors just coming in from our sides. And all the way to this section, there's your beacon, there's another red blinking light, there's another droid inside, along with a connector. Then over there is our custom turret, which made very quick work of that meteor. Then towards the bank there, there's our large hydrogen thruster. And that's that for the outside, for the armed cargo transport. So yes, it looks bloody fantastic with how it's all been set up. 
is being very creatively done with those orange blocks, going all the way along, breaking up those white, breaking up those black steel blocks. Has some great use for the arm um, panels at the back there, just housing around that large hydrogen thruster. Anyway, grabbing hold of my character, now it's time to come inside, so coming into it properly, so turn my character all around like so, there we go, now we can open up this doorway, and I'll just land myself down like so. So turn around, closing out right behind me, this is what we get for our inside, so yes, we see a bunch of stuff going on, and yes, this is the main living quarters, those steps go all the way up, is up to basically a one block wide area, it's basically to allow you to get up into the cockpit, drive around properly. Anyway, for the bomb here, to our right we've then got a plant block, to our left we've then got a Button panel where we control our refineries, our assemblies, and then our air vents to depressurize and do pressurize. So then one's gonna be turned off our refineries, so we click that, then after a short delay, the LCD screen will update. There we go, then now turned off. Then we press number one to turn it back on. Number two is the same for the assemblies, and then number three is for our air vent, which is all the way up to there to depressurize the area. Make sure you don't waste oxygen when you come in and out of this vehicle. Moving past this section, over to here we've got a cargo here, one here, one on the opposite side for you to store a few bits and bobs inside. And over here for your passengers to sit on while you're driving away, or just simply sit back and relax while you're cruising along towards your destination. Hopping off this chair and turning over to this part, here's one of your two scripts, which is your radar scripts. To the opposite side, here's your automatic LCD screen script, which is currently telling you all the important stuff about this ship. So we see our auction, our hydrogen, your reserve auction tanks, then we've got our power remaining, our batteries for stored, the outputs, and inputs. Then all the way down to here, we can see what's taking up most of the power on this ship. Which is always a very handy thing to have in case you want to turn something off or you're not too sure what's actually draining most of the power from your vehicle. Turning around towards the bank, there's your other cargo container. Over here, we've got some more important bits of information. We have once again our oxygen, hydrogen, reserve tank, and batteries. Then over here, we've got our large cargo containers, our small cargo containers, and then our ship mass, which is always a good thing to know when you try to fly this out of planet. And as for that, that's pretty much it for this bomb section. So all we've got to do now is come up these steps, these lovely glowing steps. I do absolutely love this sci-fi skin on these step blocks. Just the way it makes the steps just pop out. And especially with that blue colouring, I always love this type of blue colouring. Just works so well on pretty much everything. But yes, up to here, there is our corporate to get inside. First of all, here's an armory lock as to store a few bits and bobs inside. Behind me is an inset light block to light up the general area. And then without further ado, looking all the up, popping into here, first person view, this is all we can see. So once again, we've got important information on the LCD screens, and then down today it's your radar. But looking up, that's the only way we can see outside. So we are very limited to our forward-facing camera, or using the third-person view. So coming into third-person view, bring up the HUD. These are our controls. When number one, two, three, four, five, and six could be for all your hydrogen thrusters around the ship. So starting with number one, number two, this is for your forwards and backwards controls. Very traditional stuff there. Then number three, number four, for your left and right thrusters. Then number five, number six, for your top and bottom thrusters. Of course, we've always got a mask toggle on number 9 to turn them all off, turn them all on, that's what we want to do. The last control in this section is for your drive script to turn that on and off. Then over to tab number 2, we've got our main bulk of the controls, basically our general control tab that we're going to be staying on 99% of the time. We've got number 1 for our camera to view straight forward, see what's going on there. Coming out of there and pressing number 2 and number 3, this is to change what your turrets are currently targeting. I've set them to the weapon, but they spawn in by default on defaults. And then number 4 is going to be for your AI defense block to switch that on and off as you please. Number 9 is then for your beacon and antenna. On to tab number 3, we've then got our connectors, our lights on and off, our magnetic plates at the back there, as well as our light next to the magnetic plates on and off. There we go. And of course, we've got our other connectors on the bottom of the ship to turn it on and off and to lock and unlock it. And there we are with the controls. So, driving this thing around, and hopefully, some space pirates will spawn in the background while we're doing this. There should be some Reavers in this world, because it's still the same world as the giant turret that I did a video on not too long ago, where the Reavers did interrupt me for that. Yes, turning on the signals, flying forwards, here we go. And as you expect from a large hydrogen thruster, we've got some bloody good speed out of this. Coming to a stop, we are a little bit slower, but not too bad. Plenty of time for this statue to come to a stop when you charge along towards your base. But you should do randomly slam into it, or blow up the base and this ship. And of course, if that's not good enough for you, you can always pick up to maximum speed. Do a 180, make it stop a lot quicker. There we go, look how fast that thing stops. Bloody good stuff. Anyway, for your left, right. Up and down, it's all going to be the same, the same thrusters in each direction. And for Jurassic group controls, moving this thing around. Not too sure why I came first person view, but here we go. Yes, we've got plenty of control over this. A slight hidden away there, so it's not too overly responsive like small fighters tend to go for. But still perfectly serviceable for a cargo ship. Make sure you can maneuver this thing around. And make sure you can track fast moving targets in the distance there. So you can say, guard your friends. They're in the turrets. Want to manually control them. And as for that, that's pretty much it for this ship. And all that has to offer. 
which is a fantastic little cargo ship, this does have a great design, and some great utility along with it, should do very well in safari mode if you do want to do some trading from planets to a nearby space station, or just generally move cargo from one place to another, start building up another base, maybe in space, or on another planet, or another moon. So as for that, I'm going to hop around for a little bit, try and find some space pirates, if none of them spawn, which is me slam it into an asteroid, and end it that way. So unfortunately no space pirates decide to spawn, and no Reavers decide to spawn, I'm kind of surprised that the Reavers do not want to spawn, because I keep spawning in more stuff into this world, so my block count is increasing. I may have forgotten to change some things to my faction, but hey who, they should have spawned in. But anyway, we're charging along towards the asteroid, any second now. And there we go, that was a nice big explosion. And what is remaining? So turning on my light, moving away here, and it looks like not much is actually remaining. We've got some steel blocks there. We've got some... Oh, that looks like a little shelf over there. Oh, no, that's the magnet plate. With one of the little neon troops on the side there. As for the rest of that, it's just basically all destroyed. But anyway, for the ship, it's a fantastic little ship to use in your world. The bleeding twist could you blow if you should download and play around yourself. As well as the link to Skybox I'm currently using. It's another very fancy one from the Homeworld series. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye-bye.